Welcome to my weekly live stream for the UNO platform uh, live coding. I'm uh, spending about an hour every week uh, looking at code and uh, features about the UNO platform, adding, um, looking at debugging issues and answering questions if there are any. I'll be today looking at a few issues. Uh, one of the issues is the uh, custom fonts. Uh, uh, custom fonts on Android, one of the which uh, when specifying custom fonts when uh, loading up in an Android app, it doesn't work completely. So uh, you can see that it does that kind of um, weird behavior and alignment. And the other one will be the looking at the uh, XAML behavior feature that was introduced by Microsoft a, a, a few years back and import that we ported over to the Uno platform. And we're going to take a look at what happens. Uh, so let's start with uh, the XAML behavior issue. So for those who don't know uh, what XAML behaviors are, uh, it's a set of uh, attached properties that you can set onto a button, for instance, uh, that you can see here, and for which the behavior can be attached to, uh, to a control. So let's say uh, you have a set uh, event trigger behavior, so you can attach that to a button and say, uh, if you click on uh, the button, then you can invoke a method directly into, um, into onto the target. So that target, for instance, here is the uh, dashboard selection flyout, which is a flyout defined here at the top. So it allows for just navigating the tree and calling a method. So the method hide on the flyout. So there's other methods, uh, other uh, behaviors that are available, like uh, you know, storyboard behavior, if I'm not mistaken, and a few others like that. Uh, and we can go search for that one. So it's available on GitHub. And the uh, and the fork is able is available in the in the Uno platform. And uh, so if we search for a few of those, you're gonna find uh, XAML behaviors, interactions. And uh, in the interactions, there's a, I'm oh, sorry, it's the interactivity. Uh, there's the, in the shared, so that's the shared project. So we need to go into shared project. So there are a few things like uh, actions, behaviors, and others. So that's the base classes that are used by the behaviors. And in the interactions, there are many, uh, many actions that are available. So you have a change property, you have a data trigger, event trigger, go to state action, you have invoke command, uh, and a few, other, uh, a few other actions like that. And what that does is that it allows you to just uh, specify behavior directly into the XAML without having to write code in the code behind. So in, in some cases, it's easier to write the code behind. But in others, it's not so easy, especially when you're inside of a data template where you can't write a code behind, let's say if you're in a resource dictionary, for instance, where that won't work. So uh, the issue that I'm looking at is the fact that uh, when I have a, um, a UWP application like this, and I have a, my button that's uh, defined at the top here, the idea is that when I click the button there's a flyout that pops up so you can see there's something uh, um, up top because there was a i did a bit of troubleshooting beforehand and when i click on the close me the what happens is that the call method here is going to be binding is going to be uh calling the method hide on the flyout uh, specified here and uh for some reason on WebAssembly, in some cases it doesn't work so we're going to try and see uh, if that, that same behavior happens when running on uh, WebAssembly. So if I click here and I close, the closing happens. So the problem in most cases is to try to find out the issues that are happening uh, and, and, uh, for end users, uh, for developers, and trying to repro them in, in, uh, in, uh, in smaller cases. So if that happens, if, if that works that way, uh, that means that there's something that um, I'm missing somewhere in the repro. So let's try to to fiddle a little bit with uh, that repro and see if uh, we can make it break. <clears throat> so 
a few of the things that were uh, specified in the uh, in the in the source the original source for that issue was the fact that there's a um uh there's a data context that's specified so maybe uh, specifying a data context somewhere has an impact with this so we can try to uh, specify a data context so uh, if we are here instead of specifying a content we can specify a data context like this for instance and see if that has an impact somewhere um, and see if that that makes it behave differently so in that context it does work but let's see if it's if it's behaving differently so um, I'm probably going to be disabling the linker for this issue so that we don't spend too much time waiting on the linker. I had a bit of code that was specified somewhere in the documentation for the bootstrapper. Um, get the linker mode. linker configuration. So I think it is able, so we've got the wasm linker enabled here, so we can provide that. And I'm going to place that somewhere in the configuration file. So it goes a bit faster. Okay. So the application started again and let's see if we can reproduce the issue. If we can't, um, we'll be so the issue still ha is still not happening. Okay, so um, if that hasn't happened, I'm not going to search too much because it probably is not interesting to find an issue that the source of the the this the original source is not visible. So that won't be particularly interesting. But the idea is that you can do uh, things like that with your code and use a behaviors to link one element to another and uh, have its behavior pro properly working. So one of the, the other workarounds that is available is that you can use XBind instead. So if you use XBind, that's another way to specify content. So it, you're basically mapping that property to that other property. The only thing is that the data template has to have a, has to have a data type. So uh, in there, you have to specify, let's say, main page local, and that one is gonna allow you to select that uh, that object. So let's see if that one uh, is allowed to be built. But it should be. There it is. So it's building properly. So let's see if that still works with uh, our debugging story. The generator has a problem. Main page does not contain definition. Okay, so that's one of the things that doesn't work properly because it's in a data template. So that's something that Windows supports, but we don't. Okay, so even then, uh, that behavior is not supported completely. So we have a next name here, and it should be possible to link those two, but it's not available. So let's take a look quickly at the, at the generated source and see if there's something that should have been available. Um, so to take a look at the source, the generated source, we can go here in the dependencies and analyzer. And a code generated, we can see it here in the main page. And uh, we can find the template available here. So it has a name. But is it available? So dashboard selection flyout is available. but it's outside of the template for some reason, and it's not. So if we go to that line, that would be 232. So it's inside 232. And we have a binding here. And it's using main page. Okay, so that would be because that property is not available on main page, which is curious because, oh, that's why it's okay. It's a data type, so it's not possible to do that. Okay, so that explains. 
So uh, it's something that we that we are not supporting in Uno. So we can't use xbind where UWP does it. So we can't use xbind to reference a next name that's in a flyout because it's in a data template. So if it weren't in the data template, we could. But that's not the uh, that's not the issue that we're uh, that that we want to look look at for now. Okay, so let's stop here for this one uh, because it's not reproducing, so it won't be particularly useful. But at least it was a small walkthrough about what uh, the sample behaviors are uh, interested interesting for. Uh, if you wanna if you want to to see more of the sample behaviors, you can see the in the, repro the re in the project here you have a C sharp folder with samples and many samples about what you can do. So call method, uh, change property, and a few others like that. So let's say, for instance, if you want to go and test out change property, you have a way to change the field property of the data trigger, data trigger rectangle that's available here uh, up top here. So you can change. So when you, when you press the button, it allows you to set the property of the rectangle here through uh, through the values, the value specified here, and you can do the same thing with that button here. So that's the uh, that's the idea be the idea behind the example behavior. So there are many other uh, samples that are available. Uh, data trigger is one of the few that is used quite a bit, and it allows you to bind to let's say conditions like greater than or a few others like that. So if the value here in the binding is greater than then you change the property to a specific value. Uh, so yellow in that case for the fill property of the data trigger rectangle that is available here. So it changes the color of the surrounding rectangle. So that's what uh, the behaviors are able to do. So let's jump on to the other one. So the other issue is uh, when using custom fonts, text and position text position in a text box or button doesn't re render correctly on Android. So we're going to try to troubleshoot that one and see, um, can we reproduce it? Is it specific to a version of Uno? Uh, let's say, was it updated in, uh, in, in more recent builds of Uno? And, uh, and see where that goes. So I've already opened the solution and we're going to go and troubleshoot this. So let's select the Android project. Uh, I have a 7.1. So let's go for a 10.1 emulator and see uh, if, it, if that repros. So we're gonna, I'm going to be using the solution as is and see if, um, if the application uh, reproduces uh, the, the sample reproduces the issue uh, as it is. So it takes a bit more time, I hope. So I, I've been trying out uh, a few of the .NET 6 features, and it looks like uh, compiling goes a bit faster. And uh, I'm really eager to see what the .NET team has for us with regards to, uh, to that, kind of, uh, that kind of updates uh, with regards to .NET 6 and Android. Um, we've seen that many of the many of the of the features of the updates that were done for WebAssembly and .NET 6 when moving from Mono to to .NET uh, have shown quite a few uh, quite a few things, and uh, it got interesting. Uh, okay, so yeah, and it got interesting, and then uh, you know, if the application go faster, that's a win for everyone. Okay, so that's the that's the application. So the custom font and default font. So far, nothing seems to be problematic. So let's see. Let's take a look at the at the the repro itself. So we have a noto song medium for the button and text box, uh, and the font is available as assets here. Let's see. Uh, in assets, do we have the font? Yes, we do. Uh, is it having the right Android assets? It does. So maybe there's something else that's not working properly there. 
So the default font is here. Let's see if the documentation has something that was of interest there. So uh, the uh, logging sometimes says that um, if a font is not available, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get a message. So uh, we have an entry that was in assets, so we know that the font is available. But so far, it's not providing anything that is useful because the custom font and the button looked the same. So if I launch the app again, maybe there's something that I missed visually. Yeah, so the text indeed looks different. So if I, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, I think we're gonna be able to see it. So let's see, I'll take a screenshot. And we're gonna go and take a look at the pictures. Uh, it's not a camera roll. Uh, I don't know where the where the when those go. <laughs> Let's see. So the the if you want to know the location of the the um, the snapshots, you need to go to not the snapshot. Sorry, the records and playback. There's a settings here. Screenshot save. Okay, oh, it's saving on the desktop. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So there it is. So let's see, is the text different? So yeah, it does look different a little bit, but uh, it's not particularly, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, you know, so the font needs, looks like it's a little bit more, uh, has, has a bit more weight to it. So that, that looks fine to me. Uh, so if it's not aligned, that means that there's something else uh, in the repro that's a bit different. So, so it's 3811. So let's see if the behavior is exactly the same there. Uh, the, um, sorry. the install package is the right one. So if we have, Three eight thirteen, so that's the right one. So is there something else that we need to know about? Um, so maybe it's a it's a question of version of the simulator. So let's say we try with another one. So let's go for. Let's go for. Uh, you know, Pixel 2, for instance, if that one works. I'm not sure. Ah, I see. That one is a... Um, that one is a... Probably a version that uses ARM... The ARM CPU, so that doesn't work. So that's probably a simulator that's incorrect. So let's go and... Uh, let's go ahead and alter that one. That's probably what I did there. So what we could do is probably, now let's say we do change the um, the DPI that for that uh, for that application. So let's remove those two, they're not useful. And we're gonna create a new uh, emulator that has, uh, that has a, uh, a bigger DPI that we can change. So the density here. So let's go for a very high density. I don't know what that's going to look like, but you know, we'll see. Uh, pixel 2. Okay. So API, so Nexus 10, X86 for the performance and then API 30. So let's go for that one. Oh, it looks like I had it somewhere because it started quickly. Okay. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so that's the, uh, that I, I, I never take a look at the, uh, at the, uh, at the skins that are added there. 
I don't know if the uh, the skins is available there. Oh, there is a skin. Okay, that's because it's dynamic. Okay, that's the skin that's available here. So it uses uh you know the, the tablets that are very old, uh, the ones that are coming from uh, you know twenty. 20 uh 2012 or something so it's uh it's quite bad okay so very high dpi so let's try to start again the application and see if we see something different in this one because in some cases the the having a higher dpi tends to alter the way we're we're displaying things so maybe it's this so the application's uh, coming up online once it's built there we go okay so it's still not behaving any any, any different than what the uh, the sample is showing so let's see um we have a button let's make the button way too large uh too way too way too big you know in height so we have a hundred instead um so i'm using uh, visual studio visual studio 2022 and the uh, hot reload is not available in this version it's something that we're going to fix in the future let's uh, republish for now the benefits of having 2022 for performance are, are significant so that's why i'm using it for the for the stream it's uh, it's quite nice okay so if we make it bigger does it center still still centered okay so that's two issues that we're looking at both the uh, the repro is not clear so that one should have been working and it's not working uh, there's probably something else that needs to be done to to get that to repro but definitely not available so uh there's a um, there's a link actually in this in the in this that shows uh, when running uh, when you want to have custom fonts we have a, a feature article that explains uh, what to do here uh, oh, not there well, that's interesting oh wow <laughs> the link <laughs> the link is is a uh, is not doing this okay so it explains how to do custom fonts on android and on ios and uh, i think we have a, a web assembly as well and uh specifically when you're you want to do it for android you have to uh, use the file like this uh and so add the font to the assets folder set it to uh move set it to android assets so that's what i verified uh, when starting the application and then afterwards you can use the font family that way and um, that's going to work for you. One well, last thing that you can you can try is to update to let's say latest build of Uno and see if uh, you know, something changed for some for some reason in between. Because definitely it does work with uh, the version that we're looking at. So let's see if we upgrade all this. If we do repro, so we're going to three ten def four. downloading a bit installing everything so that's new that hash is uh is new it's something that they'll uh they the, the dotnet team is pushing as part of the reproducible builds initiative so i don't know if it's uh something that will be useful at some point okay so let's rebuild again and see if we have something of interest there okay so that's the kind of stuff that uh, i hope the uh the dotnet 6 updates will help for it kind of you know, locked files and stuff that happen there especially when you upgrade uh, packages so let's try with a rebuild and see what that that helps so um if you've been if you've been using visual studio 2022 uh there's uh a member of the dotnet team that has been asking for uh, I've been asking for uh, your feedback about your experiences with Visual Studio. And uh, 
if you're up for it, you can go and up and uh, vote on that topic. Uh, for me, it was uh, better. The performance for the Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2022, it's definitely better than uh, 2019. Uh, it looks for some people it hasn't been, so I can't show you there, but uh, some people have been saying uh, worse than 20, uh, 2019. So I, I would be interested to see uh, how come, but uh, yeah, so far it's been interesting. Okay, so even with an updated version of Uno, it's still not reproducing the issue. So visually, it looks good. Um, there's definitely something else that uh, that fails for some reason. So definitely not that. Okay. So let's uh, go fishing for other issues. I don't have one specifically that I can take a look at. Let me see my notes. Maybe I do have something else that we can take a look at uh, very quickly. Ah, yes uh that one is is interesting so we have about an half and half an hour and we can probably go take a look at that one so so this issue let's see this issue is about divisible balance padding behavior so uh, when you're when you're working with applications uh especially with with ios and android and specifically ones that are using um that have notches or rounded corners or uh, things like that. You know, an iPhone it has a rounded corner, so it's something that, that you need to, to take a look at and, and handle properly. Um, iOS has a notion of a safe area uh, for UIKit, but that, that's not something that translate well into, uh, into uh, WebAssembly, so, uh, I'm sorry, into WinUI. So uh, WinUI has uh, something that's called the, bound, the, the window bounds and uh, it's a visible bounds, if I remember correctly. Visible bounds. Oh, oh well, <laughs> we got a visible bounds padding behavior showing on top. That's nice. Um, so we had window bounds here. And we also have window point dot visible bounds. Um, in there so we get a visible so we got bounce here but that's not the right one there's a visible bounce somewhere oh it's on application view so what that one does and it's actually not used that much now with um with uh um, you know no support for mobile devices but it's something that allows you to take into account the fact that there's a an occluded region so for instance if you were on a mobile phone, the status bar at the top would be something that uh, would be included there. So the bounds of the window would be different from the visible bounds of the window. So that allows you to move your content down a little bit uh, and adjust for that. On iOS specifically, when you have, so I don't have the device uh, available here. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna start uh, because there's a uh, there's a bug that has to, that has actually been fixed in the in recent version of. Um, on Visual Studio, but I don't think my version of uh, the preview has that. So we're just going to take a look at that uh, on, on Windows. But the idea is that if you have your rounded corners, the visible bounds is going to be applying a padding to a specific, uh, to, to your control. So uh, what that does is something like that. So if you don't have the visible bounds padding applied, then your content is going to be you under you know, the notch at the top and is going to be uh, below, you know, the, the anchor that's available when you have running on an iOS device. So what the visible bounce padding do, does is that it's going to take the safe area or whatever it's called on the other platform and push the content uh, using a padding up or left or right, depending on all that. And that behavior is done that way. So let's say you have a grid, you can put uh, the padding there to say a uh, visible bounce padding behavior there and say with a padding mask, I want the grid here to be pushed uh, to have a padding so the content of the grid can be pushed up uh, from the bottom when there's something applied. So in here, for instance, uh, the the block that it's that is here is having a padding applied to it because there's the anchor there that's used to manipulate the UI. So that's the uh, that's the idea behind that control. And most of the time, if you're on Windows, it's not going to do anything. It's just uh, uh, there's you know the 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 window 
actual size is matching the visible bounds so you know, you don't have anything to to do uh, so now if you look at the if we look at the issue that was opened uh, there's a problem there with uh, that specific control where there can be uh, null references happening in certain locations and uh, uh, what can happen is that in some cases that behavior may fail because uh, the the class is relying on things like these and the problem is that in some cases um, you know if you're removing your app and uh, you're having a race condition specifically the window current may be null uh, because let's say uh, you have removed the content from the UI and then you're trying to, you know, the, the visible bounce wedding is trying to do something with it and that fails. So uh, it could be because the application is starting up or because uh, you know, it's running from a different thread or anything like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is try to go and take a look at that one and trying to remove all those references that may fail uh, and try to do something interesting about it. So I think I do have some changes there. I'm just going to be pushing that to that branch. And we're going to create a new branch. OK. So uh, the, contribu the contributor that opened the issue is um, ZipSwitch, one of the very, very early adopters of, uh, of Uno platform and has been uh, has been developing on it for quite a while. Uh, and uh, I think fixing that one would probably uh, be helping him quite a bit. So what we're going to do is open the solution in a specific in a specific uh, uh, filter so that it doesn't take too too long to open and we're going to do it uh, use uh, let's go for net standard 2 let's go for net standard 2 for that one okay so net standard 2 is going to be the skia one so let's open for yeah let's go put for skia so that file is uh, here to enable you to load only a part of that solution so that Visual Studio doesn't you know, lag too much or does you know, funky things. Um, if you're using Visual Studio 2019, you have to uh, open it using filters. In 2022, it's a bit better. It doesn't crash uh, and or actually significantly, significantly better. But at least uh, you can work with it. So the visible bound spanning behavior is available in the Uno UI toolkit. And what we're trying to look for is uh, location, locations where we're using a window current bounds. So I don't know if we've done something around this, but one of the things that is not present in that control is the nullable references behavior um, feature from, uh, from the compiler. So what we're going to try to do first is, is enable this. So for now, uh, the Visual Studio is still trying to work its way out to get IntelliSense working. So we're just going to have to wait a bit, but let's try to do that first. So we're going to do nullable enable. So that's going to help there. And then what we want to find is uh, locations where window.current may be null and do something about it. So let's say if we go here, we can see here that window is not is not marked as nullable. So it's probably something that we can change uh, right away to try to detect those. So if we do this, we should be seeing pretty soon the fact that we're trying to dereference something with a nullable okay so maybe null. so we're going to try to fix all those green squigglies so that it works properly so we can see here that for instance the owner may be null so that one that means that that one 
is nullable, so may fail as well. So we can mark that one. So we have a window current content that can be null. We have the owner in here that may be null as well. What do we have here? We have uh, the owner can, that can be null. We have uh, down there. What do we have down there? The owner also that can be null. So interestingly, we're doing a find first parent. So there may not be a scroll viewer. So we can probably just do something like that. Hello, Angelo. Hello from uh, Montreal. Uh, so we got our owner set to null. Uh, that's set to nullable. Now we have uh, that one that we know that can be null. So what we can do here is say that if there's no owner, uh, we can basically say that the visibility padding is going to be nothing. So we do owner is not null. So we cannot use we cannot yet use is not null because we're not using uh, C sharp nine C sharp uh, nine yet inside of Uno. It's compatible. So the applications that you're developing are compatible with it, except with a UWP. Uh, but uh, that's something that will be changed in the future. So we have that one. We have. Uh, this one as well that may fail. So if we validate for nullable. So we have if owner um, is null or if uh, owner is not loaded, we can skip the update padding as well. Then in here we have uh, our bounds consistent. So we have visible bounds, get orientation. So we're trying to get the orientation of the display uh, for the current window, but it may still fail as well. So let's do this, what happens then? So we may go to, so if we do this, we're gonna go to the default value of display orientations. So what is that one? The default value of the display orientation is going to be none. That makes sense. So that that falls into a good category. That means that if the window is not available, then we don't have any orientation available. So it's going to be different from the current view, likely. So that's good. Then what next do we have? We have a dependency as framework element here. Um, so that one is interesting. So we're not doing any type of any type of validation here to say that if the dependency object is not a framework element. So we should probably should be validating for that. Is there a fix for this? No, I don't think there is. So we can change to cast, but it's not particularly nice. So let's do this as well. So we're going to use blocks and move this to a case. So if a dependency object is a framework element, so it is, that's good. And then for the rest, we just we just ignore it because it's not particularly important. The only thing that we should be doing is maybe um, either we raise some debugging information if need be. That would be uh, that would be of interest. So let's let's uh, let's do this. So in here, we can use the dependency object. So dependency object log, and we're going to be using log level debug, read my mind. And we're going to be logging in debug to say that the framework element that's uh, supported padding uh, changes supported only in framework elements. So 
So let's make let's make the uh, the exception more interesting. So we know that uh, we try to get a framework element and we get something else. So if we get a null, it's going to be easier to to validate. So that's it. That's sure. That's the good one. And then we have here uh, offset visible bounds that may be incorrect. So we can take the visible bounds and then if the window is null, then what do we do? Um, that we're going to be doing something like this. So if if the window current is not null, then we can do something about it. Otherwise, we skip it. Um, I need to specify the type, otherwise it's going to be something else. Okay, so if window current is window, so if we do have a window, then let's not dereference it twice. So we can reuse the the type here, and that's it. Okay, so is there another one? Ah, there's that one as well. So we get the bounds here, returning results. Okay, so in that case, if we don't have a window, we should be simply returning a an empty rectangle. So we don't have any. We don't have any available there. Okay, so that should be good enough. So we're uh, with the Skia one. So we can try to run the sample samples apps uh, GTK to see if we can have something of interest, but it should be it should be working fine. So let's see. We we added uh, we added the um, the nullable here. Uh, so I I marked it as nullable here, but the file is not supporting nullable. So that's interesting that the compiler is uh, is handling it well. Okay, so we got Uno UI Skia building, a few others there. So that behavior has been taking quite a bit of time in the making uh, because there are many, there are many, uh, many possible combinations there with padding mask, uh, with changing and uh, you know memory memory issue memory uh, memory leak issues that were happening as well. So that's the kind of things that we took quite a bit of time to make sure that we're we were uh, handling properly. Uh, but we obviously didn't get everything, especially with the one that uh, that was reported there. So we're gonna try to we're gonna try to reproduce that one uh, on Windows to see if we can get the uh, the window reference to be null. It's not something that can happen on on Uno because there's no way to not get a window. So it can't be null uh, on Uno yet, at least. Uh, it will be at some point. So it's working It's working correctly because there's a, there's a, um, a visible bounce padding available for the for the whole application. So, they, so it, it works properly on iOS uh, and Android devices. So it works properly so far. It's not, uh, it's not failing in any way. So that's good. Uh, so what we can do is now go to run the, the same behavior, but on uh, on Windows. So let's try to debug that one. So for this, we change the target framework to be this one. And we're going to open the same solution, but this time with Windows only. 
Probably should be changing that name, by the way, because Windows is just, it's actually UWP, it's not Windows per se. So now Windows is going to be you know, WinApp SDK, so Windows App SDK, so it changes a little bit of the of the target. So that means that uh, reunion apps are going to be named differently. So probably going to have to change that. So if we start the app, the same sample app uh, on Windows, let's see if we can get something to be reproducing there. Howdy, Addy. Welcome to uh, some .NET and uh, Uno platform life coding. So the application's building, building the runtime test. There's quite a few of them, so it takes a bit of time, at least for the first build. And let's see if that works properly. So that app is being validated on CI as well, at least for, uh, for, for testing. Um, and uh, we can understand where uh, everything is uh, is how everything is behaving specifically on Windows, so that we can compare the behavior of the app when running on UWP, and uh, also when running directly on Uno. So we're when we're uh, comparing the behaviors uh, between the two the two targets. So in that context, we have we're still building, so it takes a bit of time. So that's the compiler keeping up. So we have uh, generation still kicking in. So I didn't know about that one. So you get in indeterminate sources or evaluation purposes only. So it looks like the WinUI progress ring is doing some is doing some interesting uh, flagging of fields that uh, um, that may be broken in the future. They probably be uh, they may already probably be broken. It takes a while. That that one takes a while to build. I, I um, I'm always looking up for things to 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 report to Microsoft. But the, yeah, definitely. The, so our app is quite big takes quite a bit, you know, there's quite a bit of, uh, of uh, XAML there, and it, it definitely takes some time to, to compile all, the, all, all that to get to an application that, uh, that can run. So still, you know, that, that is a freeze that have, I have not seen in a while. Okay, so running the app. What do we see there? Okay, so, so far it's not starting well. Ah, uh, was probably downloading a few things. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's, no, it's working properly. So it took a while to start for some reason. Looks like it's the debugger behind that was doing something interesting. So interestingly, it works properly. So now we're gonna take a look at the uh, Uno toolkit and see if we can get to uh, something that gets null at some point. So uh, we get the visibility padding here, we get the update padding feature. So if we're in here and we resize the window, we get to the window current. So we, we do have a, um, we do have a uh, window current content here that is available. So one of the ways that could happen is that if the, the the content is removed, for instance, so if we have a if we have an application that has that is uh, adding and removing content uh, quickly, and we're calling unloaded, for instance, or something like that, we get loaded, unloaded. So we're calling on Windows. We're calling the update padding in multiple locations in loading, in Visible bounce change. So that one is called in GERD current view visible bounce change. So it looks like we're registering on it, but only unregistering on it. So maybe sometimes there's a race condition somewhere that could happen. So 
so yeah so let's uh that's going to be a tough one to 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 validate but at least now we do know that uh because we've added the nullable enable at the top we're explicitly validating the uses of the window property a window current property so that uh, it doesn't it doesn't fail too much so uh, that's something that uh, we're going to try to push and maybe have something for the zip switch to test so uh, that's it um so let's take a look at a few other issues if we have uh, some so that one that one was a quick one uh so in other notes uh what did i have so that one is interesting we have another one that's that's of interest okay so if we go to uh let's say we go to the playground uh platform the uno i don't know if i have the xaml i do have xaml studio okay so on windows if you're making something like this and you have i don't know if you hang if you can have directly something at the root but let's say let's say we do if you do if you create a thumb and do this so you have a big thumb here so it's probably a bit too big let's say we have uh, we do put a stack panel first so the stack panel the thumb is a bit too small this time I'm gonna put it we're gonna give it a size so if we do this we have a thumb here so that's the control that's used by you know when you have a, a scroll bar like this so there's no scroll bar here but that one that one's a custom one because it comes from something else but let's say uh if you have a scroll viewer in a in a windows app which i don't have here let's see do i have another maybe there's one here so let's see here so if i scroll here this this is at the top is a is a thumb uh, that's used by uh scroll bars and a few other controls and in Uno, for some reason, that control doesn't doesn't appear properly. So if I take that XAML here and place it here, there's nothing that happens. So if I go to uh, Uno, well, let's open it in the in the right mode. I'm gonna open the Skia one again. And if we go to the generate.xaml to find out what, uh, what controls what control styles are loaded, we're going to find that there's probably something that's not defined properly in that style. So uh, let's go to that style when Visual Studio will have shown me the solution. Looks like having opened something with UWP has co caused quite a bit of trouble. Yeah, it's not helping that much. Okay, let's open a uh, another session of Visual Studio. That's that's one of the few crashes that I've that I've seen in Visual Studio. So, yeah. Let's open another one. Okay, so we're in that standard two still. And we're opening this gear one. Let's see if it fails again. I hope not. Oh, it's still failing. Interesting. Okay, so is there something else that's happening there? It looks like something got broken when I opened the solution for UWP. Hmm. Okay, so let's try to fix that differently then. So there's something that Visual Studio creates, uh, creates 
for its solution. So we're gonna we're going to try to adjust that to make it work better. So um, I have oh, I'm not sure what that one is. Okay. So the solution is available here. So if I open that, we're going to just drop the the VS configuration. So if I take a look at the file here, there should be a .vs folder. Let's drop it for now. Actually, I'm just going to keep it for repro steps. So if I want to be able to show the .NET team, the Visual Studio team that there's something that's not working well, Having a way to go back is always interesting. Okay, so now I should hopefully be able to open that. If it still fails, that means that there's something else related to having other instances of Visual Studio opened. Ah, so it, it looks like it's a bit better. It's it's slower because it's the first time because there's no configuration, but it's opening the it's opening the solution now. Definitely takes a while, but you know. Okay, so if I go back to uh, the Uno Skia, so Uno Skia, we can see here there's a XAML and then there's the style and generic. And in here we have we have all sorts of styles that are available. So let's say if I search for uh, thumb. We have a target type style thumb. So let's say, I'm probably take that one. So the slider thumb style. So if I go back to here and I use a, a specify an explicit style. Now I have some content. So it, sh it actually shows up because their style defined here can be used uh, in the application. So there's probably other ways to find uh, thumbs. There's probably other thumbs that are available. There's slider thumb style. There's switch thumb. MTC slider thumb style. I don't know what that one is, but let's let's see what what it looks like. Oh, it's a circle. It's probably used for um, probably used for some of the controls here. So what's that control? Let's see. Oh, that's a big one. Media style. Okay, so that's for the media. So if you have a media player, uh, then you can see that that one is used to show uh, to select the position. So that's the kind of uh, of uh, style we can see for, for that one. So that means that by default, the thumb has no style and it should be showing some content. So we can probably find that one. So what we've been doing is uh, we, we take the styles that are coming from uh, UWP directly. And to do this, we go to, uh, let's say program files, for instance, and we search for generate.saml. And then we go and pick up um, hi, hello, Ayusub. Uh, we pick up the uh, we pick up the uh, the styles that are coming from a specific version of of, we knew, of uh, UWP. So in here we can take let's say the nineteen forty one. So let's go and open that one in Visual Studio and see if we can find the target type for thumb and import the proper one. So there we go, we have the style for the thumb. So it's available here. And that's one that we didn't import when we imported the uh, the thumb. So the interesting thing here is that there's some of the, the, the theme resources that may not have been imported into Uno. So let's, let's, let's do a, uh, an experimentation. If we go back to the playground and we add a, a stack panel resource,
If we do this, what do we have? Uh, I probably, did I copy everything? Yeah. So that's the style, but it doesn't seem to be showing anything. So it could be because of the, the theme resource is not available. So if I put some red here, do I have something available? No. Something there, nothing else. So let's see if I name the style. Could be because of the default styles that are not taken into account. That may very well be. Uh, red is unknown. That may very that may very well be. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that that means that in the the playground default styles are not supported properly when read from the XAML reader. So that's probably a feature that we we'll need to add at some point. Uh, so that that works properly. So if we go back a bit, let's say I revert the style to use the original values. So that one is doing showing nothing. So it's probably it's still it probably is because the the thumb background colors are not available. So if I say red, okay, that's available. So that would be that we need to find uh, those those uh, brushes here. So thumb border background brush. So okay, those are here. Okay, so we probably can take those ones. But I don't know if they're gonna work in there. Yeah, that's probably because the resource key is not supported in the XAML reader as well. But that's fine. It's something that we can pick up anyways. So that would mean that for this style to work properly, we'll have to pick up the resources for all the all the um, for all the colors here. So if I search for thumb again, whoop, target type. Thumb, so we have the thumb here. So this is something that we can take and put inside the generate the XAML at for starters. So we can put it at the back for now. And then uh, once we do have all this defined, we need to provide the thumb background borders and a few others that were defined here. So let's uh, go back again to find those. So uh, in the thumb background, uh, there, well, there are quite a few of them. So those are defined three times they're defined for uh, the default theme then the which is the light theme then the dark theme and then the high contrast so we're going to take those and put them as well in the system resources here so that big dictionary has the default theme resources here uh, and we can go down a little bit so if we can collapse all of them so that all of them so that it's easier so in default we're going to add that let's say close to the end that was calendar view combo box and a few others okay so the first one is for The default theme so the light theme then we can update the other one with Oof, visual studio is having a hard time with uh, all those resources okay so now we have the default then we update the high contrast one so if we search for the same the same ones but in the middle this time so that one is going to be 
a little bit different. But well, let's do it at the same location, but in that one. And for the last one, if Visual Studio wants to, we're going to find the last version of it. But this time in the dark theme. There it is. We can go and open the light theme again. And close to the end, after the calendar, we can add the thumb default values as well. So if we take a look at the changes, there should be pretty close to the original ones, uh, just to make sure that we haven't had the, uh, we actually did that, uh, did the, the right, the right changes. So, so we get the default, then we have the high contrast, then the light one. Oh, it actually changed. So it's, well, that's interesting. So we have light, high contrast. Well, that changed. That changed. So the default is now. So for that one, the default is the is the uh, is the is the dark one. Okay, so that that changes a bit. So we need to swap swap the content. So it changed in between versions. That's that's actually new. Okay, so we need to swap the uh, the top one because we in Uno we have we start with the light one. Oh no, we didn't. Okay, so I, it's probably just something that we that we changed uh, recently. So default is dark, then then high contrast and light. So the the order is the right one. The the order is the right one. Okay, so that fits. So now we the changes that we made are I have I have visible bounce padding available as well there, but I'll change that afterwards. But we have changed three things, uh, two things. The first one is we added the style for the thumb. That one will allow for the, the thumb to be visible properly uh, when just created by default. And then we added all the resources needed for that control to be, to be available in the th system resources here. So in three times, one for the uh, dark theme, then high contrast, then light, and that's it. We added the default style for that control. So you may wonder, why is that uh, style not defined in the uh, Fluent styles? Well, that's the, uh, that's the interesting part. That when you're developing uh, with Fluent, most of the styles have been overridden from the ones that are available from UWP or the system styles, but not all of them, and Thumb is one of those. So even if you have uh, the Fluent styles defined, you're not going to get the default style for Thumb out of this. Uh, it's something that is available only from the system styles. So system styles in Uno are defined in that folder, style generic and system resources in generic, uh, but are not defined in the Fluent styles that you can find here. So there's a Fluent theme that's Kia here, and you get a big file, you get a big set of files here with all sorts of controls. <clears throat> and Thumb, to my knowledge, is not one of those. So you can see here, it's not available. So it's not overridden by uh, by the Fluent theming. Um, and it's something that uh, we can't adjust in Uno. So it has to be two, le two levels uh, for that. And it's something that's even going to be, um, to be changed in the future, namely when we're gonna be adding support for uh, the the styling for uh for when you uh, two six sorry and uh, in two six the set of styles are uh, evolving as well so we're going to be having to adjust a few things there 
uh, with regards to support, but still no thumb. <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be something interesting. Probably gonna be uh, doing this uh, during a live stream as well. So that's it. Uh, we covered quite a few things today. Um, you know, two with two issues that weren't reproducible, uh, which was a problem, and then uh, two others that are interesting. So the one was the first one with the, was the visible bounce padding that we uh, changed and uh, checked for nullables there. And the second one is the fact that this thumb is not having a default style, so it's not showing up in the in when uh, when created by default in an application. So I hope you uh, you learned a bunch, and uh, I hope to see you next week. Until then, happy coding, and uh, you know, give me a follow if you want to know uh, when I when I join. Bye for now.